Alright, we're going to just show you how to design an Inclusal Night Guard using ExoCAD software. Um, these are the basic steps and entering the lab we're going to use the patient's name and the technician. In the little notes window below you'll give a brief description of what you actually are doing. In this case a night guard. Then you'll program it and tell it what it needs to do and that's done by the tooth chart. If you click on a tooth, click on bite splint. Again you can change the minimal thickness that it's recognizing but don't you don't have to play with that too much click OK then shift and click on another tooth and you'll highlight all of them this is the antagonist same thing shift and click on it you're good here's you're selecting where the data is coming from in this case digital impressions then you'll hit save and go straight to design design will take you to a window um, asking where you'll get the data from in this case we're going to use raw original data load scan data um, then it'll take us to the network in our case we go to the O drive find the patient folder and find the scan that was just that we need to load click on it and you'll follow the prompts the upper and then the lower that was up in the left hand corner of that window prompting you this is the insertion angle so you'll notice that we want to get it in a certain orientation that we can insert the appliance here you can trim any excess if you were to click and drag you could highlight different areas and delete it or highlight and fill holes um, in this case we're fine go to next this is going to confirm the path of insertion uh, blocking out any undercuts that you don't want based on your specifications here we decided to change the position set it and run the application and it'll make this gray model that is basically blocking out areas that you don't want the appliance to lock into basically the undercuts so you'll see here in a minute that it'll be grayed out you can see the little bar on that left lower window that is finishing it's almost done now there you go if you like that then you click next and now we're going to draw the shape of the appliance now I've, this is kind of tricky it takes some time to learn how to do this so it doesn't come out of the mouth and doesn't get locked in there so we try to go about half to two-thirds the way down the face of the buckle side of the tooth giving us enough surface that it will actually retain itself in the mouth um, and then on the distal of these molars all the way down to the tissue if you can and then you come on the lingual and two to three millimeters onto the tissue that'll help you have enough surface area to help retain that in their mouth comfortably see there we just keep clicking we're actually left clicking um, holding shift down I believe once we get almost there then you'll double click and it'll connect the dots nice thing is next you can edit this you can see those little dots if you don't like how it looks if it doesn't look even and symmetric and in the position you'd like you can move those buttons around and reapply in this case we liked it and now um, we're selecting the posterior areas and then you can click on flatten the posterior areas so now there's no interferences and we're going to do some personal modification or fine tuning. I like to turn these all the way up, makes it go a little bit quicker. One is the wheel size and one is the strength. Right now we're just adding thickness to the material. I, I like to get out all the little lumps and bumps so it's more comfortable for the patient. So we're adding some thickness. It also gives us some strength. Sometimes people are pretty hard on their teeth at night, so giving it some strength will also improve the chances that it won't break here we're thickening on the incisal edge or lingual surface of the maxillary anteriors we'd like to retain a ramp that provides guidance or disclusion for the patient and we just keep adding until we see um, the occlusion appear with the mandibular teeth so we do the same thing here just keep going we'll come back in a minute and smooth it so it is nice and even you just keep thickening that to where you think it's going to be adequate on that surface we only see one tooth dot in the posterior area or two so we add some more 
Same thing on the, on the right side here, patient's right side. We're going to add some more thickness. There you go. Even on the buckle surface so they don't break as easily, you can add that. Obviously, you be careful of making it too thick. Patients don't want a big, bulky appliance in their mouth. They may not wear it. But what's mainly what we're doing here is in between the teeth and the embrasure areas, go along clicking that and thickening it. Okay, once we've done that, we're on the Add and Remove button. We're Add and Subtract. Now let's Add and Remove. We will go to um, the Smooth and Flatten. Both have great abilities. The Smooth is just smoothing it if you don't click on Shift. If you were to click on Shift, you can actually flatten the surface out. So you'll see I'll jump back and forth between the two until I get the shape that I like, but it makes this a lot more smooth. Um, same thing on those incisal edge areas, just to be more comfortable on the patient. Here especially we do quite a bit of smoothing. This is where their tongue um, will be less uncomfortable if you can smooth this out. And you'll start to see it's starting to look more like a night guard. If you need to, again, you can flatten it. And that's holding shift down. You'll see the, the button change colors or the area highlighted by the mouse would change colors if you were to use shift. There you go. I think we're using the flatten button there. All right. Once you've got it to a position or a shape that you like, a lot of times we will go back and change to the add and remove button, change the shape of your window or your surface area or the brush size and hit shift and you'll subtract material away. And that's what we'll do here in a minute. Right now we're flattening and see how it starts to make it more smooth, more comfortable. And the idea in the post here is you don't want any interferences. There you go, now push shift and you can slowly take away some of that material. You'll see the more blue it is, the less contact there is. You just want to tr strive to keep them as even as possible in all your contacts. The goal is to have every tooth touch in the mandible with the night guard. That way it helps stabilize their position. And we don't. We want to minimize tooth movement, which will create interferences and problems. And there you see we took too much away. We're just adding it back. And we're getting closer to being complete. We're almost even there. Continue to remove a little bit by little bit. Just little clicks. We're not holding it down. And there you go. We're pretty good there. Might go back and smooth that again. There we go to make sure you don't leave any divots in it. Very good. When you're done, you would click Next, and we're going to go ahead and build the models. For the night guard to be tested on, or if you want to mount it and, and correct it in the lab, you can, or any fine tune the occlusion. So there you go. Now it's ready. It's forming it into an STL file that you can print. In this case, um, we're going to stop recording and move on and do the bases. So here you go. We were going to save it, keep both scan data. That's what I like to do. And now we are making the model. So it takes off the night guard, goes in, you set your occlusal plane. You can auto align it, then rotate this around and make sure that plane is where you'd like it to be. You can move the teeth up and down, left and right, just by clicking on it. Holding shift, you can rotate it. And then you check to make sure that you have enough height to, to build bases. If you don't, you'd increase that 41 millimeters to greater, or 40 millimeters. 
And here, this moves on, and you would click on Hollow Model. And you usually choose 3.5 millimeters of thickness. This part takes a while. It has to think through this process. Um, it's really just configuring it to create into a 3D image that's the thickness you want on all your borders that you now have a model with a base to print. Sometimes this takes longer than others. Usually on a maxillary impression, it takes longer. There's more data there. If I was to cut out the palette, which I really could have done to save some ink in our print, uh, it would have formed the model a little bit quicker as well. I'm just used to keeping the palette just in case I need it for something else down the road. So in this case, we did. There you go. There's your model. Then you'd click Next. Do the same thing with the mandibular model. You scroll down to hollow model, go to 3.5, and push run, and you should see it goes much quicker. If you look at that, you can see some jagged areas where we could have trimmed it up a little bit better probably make this process a little bit quicker for the model formation. It is trying to calculate where the base needs to extend from and how thick and how big. And we should be done in here in just a second. There you go. And the next one you'll click next. Very good. And this is where you add your text. So you type in the patient's name and date first name and last name, or last name and first name, however you want to do that, and the date. And here's a little trick that I do. I'll highlight that label and right click and copy, and then we'll subtract the text and add it to the model. You'll click on the model and position it wherever you want. Now you need to do the upper, so you right click and paste and do the same thing. Now we don't have to retype it, it just saves you one little step. So we line it up to where you want. You like that? Then you go next and it will calculate it. And we are now moving on to, once it's done, we'll be moving on to putting it into the printer. The Form Labs 2 preform docking area to print the models. There you go. And all of our settings are preset to save those documents or files into our D drive on this computer. Okay, so you'll see I'll stop recording. We'll move on to printing the models on Occlusal Guard. We'll go on and open our preform. There's already two models in this one. We're just going to add two more. So we go to File, Open, and find the folder that it's in, in this case the D drive, and in the CAD data. And you'll see the model bases in this case. So we're going to import the models. Go ahead and repair. Um, sometimes there's a little lag here as it's working through some area that it needs to recalculate or adjust. Once they're there, you will now just move them around until you, they fit onto the platform adequately. And so you can rotate them. Sometimes you adjust the inclination so when you generate the, the architecture, the supports, that doesn't go on the teeth. So you highlight those, go and add, oh sorry, you're going to change the orientation of the inclination of the teeth. So again, none of the struts get onto the teeth or supports. So here we're going to add supports, calculates those. If you don't add supports or have the proper strength in the supports or proper distribution, you'll have errors printing, you have cupping or insufficient strength and failures in your printing process. So right now what the software is doing is calculating if it's printable or not. You can see that going on in the printability section in the lower right of that window. Um, if it's printable, it'll tell you. If it's not, it'll have a little red 
circle with a slash through it if it's got questions or concerns it'll have a warning in this case it says it's not printable so you can go turn on the indications there's one more that I should have clicked on show cupping um, it doesn't really show too much if I was to show cupping it might show more but if you feel like we're good then you go and send it to the printer which is that yellow icon and now it's sending the data to the properly selected printer that's something to always remember look at which printer it's going to each printer gets its own name they come labeled ours is called thankful pig and we've chosen to put the gray resin into that one so you have to make sure you're sending it to the printer with the right resin so it'll print appropriately so as it's loading that data you'll be sitting and waiting now in this case when it gets sent to the printer the printer will prompt you uh, the next steps to start the print uh, make sure you don't leave the print until you've actually got it going once it's loaded it'll click on confirm and then it'll start um, yeah just double check and make sure it's always going I've done that many times where I didn't click on the right button and come back the next day and it's not printed okay so once that's loaded we actually close out of the form or preform software and we don't save it because we can always reload the data and print again if something doesn't work right so we just don't save that plate or that load and then we'll just open a new one or you can just go file open new or file new and it asks you to save and we say no and then it'll pull up a new platform and you'll see here in a minute that we'll select the right printer, the right ink, and load the night guard. Okay. Here we go file. New. Can I save it? No. And file open. And click on the night guard or occlusal guard now. And you'll want to rotate it. So that the occlusal surface is down, move it to the part of the print table that you'd like, the platform. Again, we've got to change the right printer. There we go, with the right ink. And you move it to your position. You want to rotate where your, your items are printed so it doesn't wear out the gel or the silicone tray as quickly. And we like it there. So we generate the supports. There's a printability of good and we send it to the printer. We click on the icon there and load or upload the job. Usually this one's a lot quicker and now you will work on the printer to accept it and start it. And that's pretty much it. And you can leave that window up if you'd like. You can close it. Um, but in this case, we're done. You'll come back in a couple hours and stop the print or clean up the printed models.